This is The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. Over our 12-episode season, I will share some of my best sweater knitting techniques with you while we knit a sweater together. Hello, my friends, and welcome to episode seven of The Sweater with Kathleen Dames. I'm so glad you're here. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the second sleeve and how we are not stuck on Sleeve Island. Do you know what Sleeve Island is? It is the sad place where we all go when we've knit the body. Sleeve one, and now, oh, we have to knit a whole other sleeve. Oh, that is no fun. So that's one of the reasons that I recommend that you knit a sleeve first, and then the body, and then the second sleeve. I just feel like it Ugh, makes life a little easier, a little less painful. You've already got a sleeve done, and the sleeve was your secondary gauge swatch, so you really know what kind of gauge you're getting. And then your body should be a successful knit. And then all you have to do is knit one sleeve and you can do the fun part of bringing everything together in the yoke. So, I finished off, I finished off my body, and I um, was working it on an interchangeable needle, so I just put the caps on um, I didn't have to slip all of my stitches to some waste yarn. And we can do a double check here to make sure that it's fitting. I haven't blocked this yet. I do know it's going to block a little bit longer. It's going to, the stitches are all going to relax when they have their bath, like we all do. But I can see that this is pretty much what I was going for. It's pretty much exactly the same, which is what I would hope for. And here, let's put it all the way around. Jane. What do we think, Jane? I think this is pretty great. So now that we've done that, we are ready to do our second sleeve. And I have to still decide, which is why I haven't started knitting my sleeve yet. Oops, we're caught. I have to decide what I'm gonna do. As you may recall, on the first sleeve, I completely forgot that I wasn't getting the same row gauge as I got in the original sample and in the pattern. So my sleeve is actually just a tiny bit, not a tiny bit, it's about an inch longer. I apparently just started knitting and didn't bother to stop. So I have to decide whether I want sleeves to be this long or whether I want to knit two sleeves. And this is a small sleeve, right? It's not significant, I mean, it's bigger than a swatch, but it's not as big as a whole long sleeve. It's certainly not as big as the body. So I'm not terribly upset if I decide to knit the second sleeve. I mean, to knit another sleeve. But that's what I need to do. The thing is also, as you can see, I still have the yarn attached to the body. So what I'm planning to do, <coughs> What I'm planning to do is to fish out, what I'm planning to do is to fish out the inside tails from my skeins because I still want to alternate to make sure I have that nice cohesive uh, fabric. <laughs> I have to find the tails, but I'll pull them out from the middle and then um, and knit the sleeve from the center. And then I'll still have my yarn attached to the body so I can get going right away when we get to that part. Okay, what else? Uh, as you may recall, last week we set aside the stitches for the underarms, and I have those here. And I've actually, something that I didn't think to mention before, I've actually also, so I didn't have to put my stitch markers away, I've just put them in the first and last, last stitch of the sleeve. So those are all ready for when we start doing our raglan decreases. I haven't set aside the stitches yet for the sleeve because as you know, as I mentioned, I'm not sure whether this is actually the sleeve that's going to work. But when I do, I will, um, when I'm getting ready to put them all together, before I do that, I will put the sleeve stitches that are needed for the underarm aside on a separate bit of waste yarn and then add the sleeves to the body, which is the most fun. <laughs> so, okay, so let's talk about buttons. Now that I've finished the body, or the, the lower part of the body, I am ready to think about buttons. Now, I'm not gonna sew them on yet, but um, I can think about them and get ready for them. I can go on a button hunt. So, I'm very lucky. The yarn from Texas, these gorgeous buttons from my friend Natalie in Canada and me in New York, they're all gonna come together here. 
Now, the thing about Natalie's buttons is that they are buttons with holes. I'm sure there's a technical term. I don't know what the technical term is off the top of my head, but I, the thing about buttons with holes and knitting is that you don't want to sew them tightly against the fabric. That tends to sort of, it causes a rough spot. It can weaken the fabric. It's just, you don't want that button to be pulled hard to get through the buttonhole every time you put it on. So what you want to do no matter what is um, sort of shank the button and that means to have um, threads that come out of the back of the button and their little space between the button and the fabric. The way you usually do it, if you learn how to sew on a button, you um, wrap the thread around the threads that have gone through the buttonhole uh, between the, between the button and the button band and you just sort of it's sort of like a knot and then um, you finish it off in the back and that way that's what's called the shank and that gives a little space between the button itself and the fabric so not too long ago I was talking about buttons with Natalie and we started thinking about something like a cufflink and let me show you, I have an example of the kind of cufflink we were talking about. It's, it kind of looks like a little barbell, it's two knots, and it's got this thread in between. And we thought, well, why not just do that with two buttons? You know, then there are cufflinks like that too. I found an old pair that I had. They're two little buttons and they're attached. Um, these are with metal. They're uh, these sort of metal loops that go between and they hook together. And those are standard kinds of cufflinks. And why not do it like cufflinks right here with your sweater because you've got two sets of buttonholes. Just like on the cuff of a French cuff shirt, you have those buttonholes. Usually it's four because it's folded back. But why not sew two buttons together and leave a little space between them just like our cufflink so that they can go through the fabric and have a comfortable space, not stressing the fabric or the, the thread between the buttons. And, um, and then on top of that, they are removable. You can take them out, wash the sweater, not worry about any damage to the buttons, not worry about things like a leather button, which is gorgeous, but should not go in the water. And your sweater should go in the water every once in a while, right? <laughs> or, even more fun, I have this glitter button. It is covered with actual glitter and you would not want to put that in the water. I'm sure that glue would dissolve and the glitter would just float away. So that's not gonna work for you. So right now we're gonna sew the button on here. We're gonna start by bringing our needle up, threaded with a bit of yarn, and then we're gonna add our button on. Be sure to leave a long enough tail you can weave in later, or you could even weave it in on the back while you're doing all this. So the next step is to sew over the buttonhole. So I did the top and the bottom of the buttonhole. Let's see if we can see that here. Okay, but obviously I'm gonna to wanna to do it a few more times. The thing is though, if I pull tight, then we're, we're stressing the fabric here and we're causing a problem and we don't want that. And we also need to be able to fit another thickness of the sweater between this band and the button. So one thing you can do, this is a pretty common thing recommended when learning to sew on a button, is to stick something like a match or a toothpick. I discovered that the toothpicks I grabbed are really splintery. And put it between the fabric and the button. Let's see. And that will give us this bit of a buffer. I usually don't bother with a match, but that's because I've been doing this for a while and I know to leave some a little bit of a gap. But this really helps. Okay, so for now I'm going to try two times through the buttonholes. You might want to do three. Maybe we'll do three at the end. But here's the last bit of the trick. Take this the Matchstick out, oh, splintery all around. Take the matchstick out and we're going to wrap some yarn around that shank. 
And a great thing to do is to then go up and back down one more time. To the back. And then obviously I'll fasten this off. I'll weave in the ends. Probably I might even do a little bit of a knot here just crossing the ends over. But the important thing, as you can see, there's this shank here of fabric essentially and that makes it easier. There's no strain then when we have our buttons buttoned. Ta-da! Oh, I'm so excited for these buttons. Another suggestion from my friend Julia is to use, I only had a square bit, a square or one of those felt circles and to sew between, to sew that onto the back. That will also help alleviate some of the stress on the buttons. One last thing to think about with your buttons is how much they weigh. These are pretty light, um, plastic and mother of pearl are also quite light. Be careful when choosing metal or um, glass buttons because they can be heavy. And if you are sewing on a lot of buttons, that can cause the button band to sag on the side that has the buttons. So that's something to just be aware of. Um, I think with this sweater, you don't need to worry too much because we're only sewing on a handful of buttons. But if you were sewing on a lot of buttons, that would be something to really think about. So what you need to do in that case, I have a really big example here, is use a backer button or sew two sets of buttons together or sew one set of buttons to a party set of buttons. Um, and then you have lots of options with your sweater. So I'm deciding, what I'm probably going to do is use these tiny baby buttons that Natalie also sent me that match perfectly. And they'll, they'll go on the back with the flowery buttons on the front. But you could have a party. You could sew a bunch of leaves on. You could sew a bunch of buttons that don't even go together. I'm looking through my button jar. I've got amazing old antique buttons. I could pick out I see a handful of different looking black buttons and you could sew them to shank them to a set of matching buttons. And then you have a lot of options for your button bands. And I love a good option. But if you don't want to do that, if you just want to sew on the buttons, that's fine too. Then just remember that we're going to sew them on over the buttonholes. The sweater is going to tell us exactly what we need to do. And that's one of those things that I sort of stumbled across and I'm really excited to share with you all because why go through, I remember trying to sew buttons on years ago when I was designing sweaters and um, actually when I was first just knitting sweaters and you have to measure and mark and have pins and, and worry and, and sometimes you do it wrong and you'd have to take it off and sew it back on in a slightly different spot because otherwise it was causing a pucker. This way we don't have to worry about any of that. They're all, it tells you exactly what to do. You just sew it on right over the buttonhole and you close up the buttonhole in the process so you don't have to worry about that. Or you could do what I suggested last time that somebody on Ravelry suggested is instead of doing the knit two together yarn over, they did two purl stitches on the button band that they knew they were gonna be sewing the buttons on. And of course the original reason to um, do buttonholes on both sides is for like a baby cardigan when you don't know or when you didn't know the gender of the baby because back in the day of course we we always had to have the buttons on one side for ladies and the other side for gentlemen and uh, we don't need to do that anymore do we really but anyway that convention it becomes very helpful when we're thinking about where we're going to put our buttons so one of the things i love about natalie's buttons and one of the things to think about is these are porcelain they are glazed on both sides and not every porcelain or um, clay button is glazed on both sides and I really appreciate that Natalie does that. I have some other buttons, they're really pretty. I got them in Maine, they're Lupins, if you know the Lupin Lady, uh, it's one of my favorite children's books. And I think these are bisque. Um, they're very smooth on the back but they're not glazed and I am a little worried that the, it's only the slightest bit rough, but I am a little worried that it's gonna rub on the knitted fabric and cause it to pill. So it's just something to keep in mind when you do go on your button hunt and you find the perfect buttons, think about um, 
looking to see if the backs are glazed too because it can make a difference. And then, so this button, this is a big button, right? I would definitely want to shank this to a button. Let's say I wanted to show it off on a nice simple sweater like the Solstice Cardi. I know, just looking at it, that there is no way this button is going to fit through my buttonhole. So in that case, what I could do is again, shank the button with a backer button. It could be a pretty button, it could be a plain button that you never see. But when you sew them together, and we'd sew them with just a bit of thread and I'd probably you know, wrap it and knot it in the middle, um, then you don't have to worry about the big button going through the buttonhole. You can worry about the little button going through the buttonhole and it would go through from front to back and it would then be on the inside of your sweater. And then if you did want to swap them and wear them the other way around, you would just sort of button it the normal way, right? You would put the button through from the back to the front, leaving your big button on the inside. And that anchors it to, it takes the stress off the fabric. If you have like a, a woolen dress coat, oftentimes you'll see that. They'll have some crazy big buttons on the front or something sort of interesting. And then on the inside, there will be this very simple flat little button and that relieves the stress on the fabric because every time you pull on your button, to button it up or to unbutton it, you are pulling on that fabric. And so if you have the two buttons, it sort of takes the stress off of it and makes it um, less painful to, <laughs> to the fabric, to the buttons, and then everything lasts longer. And of course, if we do it, if we shank them together and don't attach them to the fabric, we have the option of completely taking them out, changing them up, having a party with our buttons. So what exactly? What exactly do I mean when I talk about a shank? Here I've sewn a couple of buttons together and you can see that there's a little wiggle room and that's what I mean by the shank. I actually sewed them together, wrapped the yarn around the centers a few times and then fastened it off. I would obviously tuck things in a little more tightly if I were going to use this. But we can see here Let's put this through our so there it fits nicely through. We've got another button here and what we can do to close up our cardigan or our, in this case our swatch is put the button through the other buttonhole. There we are and we could change these out with other beautiful pairs of buttons. And actually these are two different buttons, so you could change sides. So that's an example of how you would do shanked buttons. And the reason you have that bit of yarn wound between the needles, I mean, sorry, between the buttons, is so that there is some wiggle room. And that's Okay, so just a reminder that you want to make sure your second sleeve matches your first. I know it seems obvious, but I'm reminding you as much as myself because I should have remembered about the whole row gauge thing, right? So as you're going along, hold up your sleeve that you're working on to the sleeve that you already knit and make sure you're finding the same, that you're doing things the same way. And that is the only sort of downside to doing one sleeve long before the other. But I think this isn't anything very intricate. I think it's worth it. Um, and you always have this sleeve to refer to to make sure you are doing things the right way. So a reminder about your increases that they're paired, you know, and you'll see that when we seam this up and you'll see this lovely little marching line of increases at the seam and then you'll be really proud of your little seam because it will be lovely and special. Okay, so I think that's everything for today. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, I will be back next week and we'll talk about bringing everything together, which is so much fun. Until then, thanks so much for joining me and happy knitting. Bye. This is season one of The Sweater, and we are knitting the Solstice Cardi together. Many thanks to Karen at Roundtable Yarns, Natalie at Remembrance's Pottery, Corinna at Picnic Knits, Tara Swiger and my fellow Starship Captains, and you for being part of this knitting adventure. Don't forget to visit kathleennames.com slash the sweater to sign up for the newsletter before March 25th and get your free copy of the Solstice Cardi pattern in the welcome email. 
Is it after March 25th? Purchase your copy of The Solstice Cardi from my Ravelry shop. And be sure to share your project on social media using the hashtags KDSweater and Solstice Cardi. Questions? Comments? Just want to share your progress? Visit the Kathleen Dames Design Ravelry Forum for support and camaraderie. Thanks so much for joining me, and happy knitting! Thank you.